uh, about my thoughts about the recent HD Zero goggle videos. Yeah, so Ryan Quellet has been putting out some videos about Ryan Wellet. What? No, Ryan Quellet. Have I spelled it wrong? Okay, there we go. He's been putting out some videos about the HD Zero goggles, latency testing, and so on. Uh, one of the interesting things he's done is the test the claim that the HD Zero goggles can have four millisecond glass to glass latency. A lot of people speculated that it wasn't possible to do HDMI that fast. Ryan's got a test set up here. I'm just scrolling through looking for the results. We got we got a table of results, Ryan. Mm-hmm. And what I remember reading is that the very first here we go, here we go. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan, for summarizing. If we use Chris Rosser's methodology, I should throw a link to this video. Here's a link to the video if you want to check it out. Um Using Chris Rossler's methodology, HD0 shows a whole frame in 19 milliseconds versus 35 milliseconds with analog. Um, the standard for analog camera latency testing is a photodiode test where we measure the first scan line to respond to the LED illumination. In this way, HD0 and, and analog both have subframe latency. Analog technically only shows half of a frame per field, so analog would have to be multiplied by two fields, he argues. Hence, longer latency than HD zero. I think that's debatable, um, <clears throat> because Ivan F Ivan Efimov argues, yeah, if half the analog frame show sh shows the obstacle, you can start reacting. Um, so one way that latency analog latency is measured is to measure the very first change of a pixel on screen, and by that. Uh, measurement, uh, then you could see latency as low as four milliseconds. They did accomplish it. Uh, the full frame latency, the thing is that different systems will have different ways of displaying the rest of the frame. And so another way to measure it is how long it takes for one full screen to be updated. And in that respect, it's always going to be longer because you'll always update. I mean, in some systems, I suppose you would update the whole screen at once. Like, I think that's how DJI V2 does it. But in analog and HD zero, there's a scan line based system where they don't update the whole screen at once. And so the full frame latency is another way to look at it. Which of those you think is best depends, but um, 19 milliseconds uh, full frame latency is certainly respectable. Um, not as impressive as four milliseconds, but then it depends on whether you care about full frame latency or not. Um, I, I think that full frame latency is less important in a continuous, like what I, what I like to say is, let's say that we're going to light up <clears throat> one pixel on screen and you're going to press a button when you see that pixel light up. Okay. Well, if you have a scan line based system where the whole screen doesn't update at once, then depending on where in the scanning process that pixel is, it's going to change the latency. If the pixel lights up all the way down here and the scan line is up here, it's going to take longer for you to see that pixel than if the pixel lights up up here and the scan line hits it immediately. Okay, you follow me? But we're not doing that when we're flying a quad. We are performing a continuous function in space very seldom, not, not never, but very seldom does something appear in the middle of the screen. And that millisecond difference between where, where the scan line is at any given point in time and where the object on screen is, is what makes a difference. So if you think about flying through a tunnel, okay, and the tunnel is twisting and turning and you're twisting and turning with it, you're sort of perceiving the average latency of the system as you go. At no point 
does anything appear suddenly in the middle of the screen? New information appears from the edge of the screen as the quad flies, okay? And information that you're already aware of moves in the middle of the screen. You follow me? That's what flying is like. And information that's in the middle of the screen is relevant because that's the stuff you're going to crash into. And information that comes in from the edge of the screen is not usually immediately relevant. <clears throat> I've never, I've never actually talked this out exactly like this before. Um, uh, so my, my argument is that the full frame latency of an analog si of, of a video system, it's more about like the average latency because you're going to see an obstacle come into field from the edge of the screen and you're going to have one or two frames to go, oh, I need to not hit that and change direction. And to me, that, that, that changes how you should think about the latency. Now, it does make a difference. The more that you are diving into unfamiliar areas, let's say I'm going to dive into a bando, okay? I'm going to dive through a window. It's dark, and I haven't I haven't scouted the, the line. So, like, you see Mr. Steele do this a lot. He is a, he is a, this is really characteristic of his style of flight, is that he will fly into an unfamiliar area and just boop, 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 go around. And it's almost like, and, and he does it too. I'm, it's not, I, I can tell you from having flown with him, he doesn't like go scout it 57 times and then show you the one pack. He'll just like take off and be like, what's this? What's this? What's over here? What's over there? And, and part of the reason I think that he's able to do that is just he has good reflexes. He has good reflexes as a pilot. He probably has a lower than average re reaction time, a faster than average reaction time. Um, but certainly the latency of the control link and the latency of the video link plays into your ability to do that. And the more that you're doing that, the more that you are being presented with new information that comes up suddenly and that you have to react to quickly. <laughs> so... Uh, these are thoughts that I have when we think about the latency of an analog system and whether the full frame latency versus the first pixel to change matters. Those are some things that I think about. Mo says, in FPV, there is a continuous flow of visual data into your eyes. Racing is an example. You see the gate coming. You anticipate and move accordingly, regardless of latency. Um, Mo... I, I I would agree with you, but I would also point out that Ivan Efimov did a test where they tested 500 hertz versus 50 hertz on a racetrack, and they found that they could consistently, like 10 out of 10 and 8 out of 10 for the two different pilots, they could consistently tell the difference between 50 and 500 hertz. And that says to me that that logic doesn't hold, that latency actually matters most when you're racing and it does make a difference <clears throat> anyway latency does matter so we'll see 